Good morning. Running a little bit late this morning. Getting going. Should be able to get going here by 7 o'clock or so. <clears throat> Typically I like get, to get at least going by 6. I've been running by 5.30 for the last 3-4 weeks now or something like that. I have a little bit of a philosophy when uh, things get busy or you know problems occur the best thing you can do the easiest thing that you can do to be able to relieve the situation is simply just get up early and just start the day earlier go as hard as you can through the day until you drop and it's it doesn't really sound like much but it helps tremendously like you add another hour hour and a half sometimes two hours in the beginning of the day and if something doesn't go right then at least you have you can extend that day on into the late hours and just take care of business <clears throat> just simply showing up to work is half the job things are going fairly well fairly smoothly right now I'm quite happy on how everything has progressed how we anticipate things moving forward here is just with this whole disruption within the world of just it has got me a little spooked so I've been put trying to put in the extra time just trying to do whatever I can to build to prepare for uncertain circumstances that might just appear in our doorstep so it's it's that unknown which is hard and how do you manage something that you've never, like how do you manage this uncertain circumstance? Nobody knows what the hell's going on. So we just gotta make sure that we cover our bases here. Just make sure we make the right decisions. And we just gotta make sure we get up early in the morning and take care of business. I'm gonna give you an early morning tip this morning. I'm just pulling off some of the merger splits. They're gonna go fill up some dead spots and take a look at this. This is something I'm always watching for. These. This time of year, um, the bees are building drone comb and uh, they build them within all the spaces. So whenever we're doing our work with the hives, we tend to break open the drone comb. And that's just something we're watching for all the time as beekeepers, as we survey for mites. Uh, we're always washing, we're always washing to be able to count the infection within the colonies. Uh, but, but as we go, you're also looking for drone comb that you break open. Mites just love to reside in drones because Mites, or the drones take a little bit longer to develop so the mites can reproduce a little bit longer within the drones. So they like to target the drones, or so they say. So when you break open the drone combs like that, just take a quick peek. And if you don't see any mites running around, then your colony is good. Don't rest your surveillance on that, just keep an open eye for it. Because if you do see mites in those drones, that's probably bad news and you better, you know, take the next step to uh, take a sample to see what your infection levels are. So that's Ian's tip of the day. Constant fight to keep these empty spots full. Just filling them any way I can to bring my yard back together. Got to manage these yards full. And every time we identify a weak or poor performance, we cut them out. 
and then we bring in youth and excellence to fill in those spots, keep those places productive and making money for me. So we can't allow those hives that are failing to just kind of linger within my apiary because they're not going to make me any money. They're just going to cost me money as we invest into them. We cut those ones out and we drop in the pure brilliance that we are promoting within our stock. So we're digging into the builder to find some graftable Breeder. larvae. Pardon me? Breeder. Oh. He's a builder. Right. This is not a builder, he's a breeder. This is the eight of clubs. So we don't have a tag on this one except for that. The two stars, <laughs> a blue tag, another flag. So something's going on in there that we like. So we do it the old fashioned way and we just dig through the colony till we find something that's suitable. Is she pushed right out to the wall? She's, she's well, she's oh, just she on is. this, yeah. She's a beauty. That's her mama. We have this nicely filled with uh, nectar. And if you can see, you can't really see, but she has dominated her space in this frame. She's about to start laying in this area here. So those bees are, are behaving, unless there's eggs in there now. No, there's no eggs in there. So they're just providing space that she needs there. No, she's got a few eggs. Which is what we like to see in a colony, well organized like this. The queen is demanding her space Have we uh, grafted from her before? Nope. First time? First time to shine. So I can't see what's in there. So that's a frame full of mature larvae. Wow, that's solid. That's that's what you want to see is you won't see this through the camera but you want to see groups of liked aged eggs or larvae or brood just all the same age and grouped together very well organized and placed yeah, right there right in here okay so that's exactly right so here's mature larvae and it gets younger as it goes out, kind of like in a semi-circle, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of moves itself younger all the way out. So there's a frame to graft from. You have lots there. It looks like it. Oops. I need 90. You need 90. <laughs> a big number. What's the other side of that frame look like? Full of pollen. Yep. So give him a second box to lay in. You uh, set that over. So she will be moving up shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, as they're emerging, they're packing it full of pollen. That's why she's moved up there so soon. Oh, that resource. Beautiful brood. Very nice. Nice and solid. They almost need pollen traps on here. How many frames of brood do they have here? <clears throat> wall to wall by the looks of it. <clears throat> We're not going to pull them down too much. We'll just keep bothering them as we pull graftable larvae from them. Very well fed, ready to work for us. Which bunch of builders are you after today? You are on a second row, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I am going to bother you to, let's see how you did yesterday. So these were grafted yesterday. Many bees on that frame, eh? 
but I'm seeing most acceptance. You can see the royal jelly just being drawn down and all those cells just starting to. I think these guys need a little bit of a boost. Yeah. We'll maybe give them some bees. Let's see what the other one looks like. See the royal jelly coming down in them. It's nice. Just started. Now, as we're working through the builders, we're noticing that uh, the builders might be a little bit shy on bees, so. We've been rotating a brood frame throughout the builder just to provide some fresh young bees to them. But uh, we decided to shake some more bees into them just to make sure they have all they need to be able to draw out these queen cells. So we picked a yard, we picked this yard, and we're just going through. And uh, we're just basically just skimming all the surplus bees out of the yard. So we have one box made up. I might have filled this up a little bit too much. So there'll be four frames of foundation in there, packed full of bees, and we'll give one frame per builder. So that should really bulk them up. And we're working on another one here right now. This yard is a pretty good yard. It's giving us a lot of bees. You notice there's a bit of a jungle. We gotta get out here with the mower. But we're working through and filling up our second box, and that should provide us all the bees we need uh, to be able to boost these builders up. These hives are, I mean, I'm just absolutely surprised, not surprised, just impressed on how full these hives are. I mean, boxes of bees, we're tipping back boxes of bees all day. These guys aren't swarming it. But you'll notice a lot of drone cell on the bottom and cups but they're just getting ready they're in just just getting into the spirit to swarm off so we're skimming those bees off to boost up the builders so there's no problem here the rest of the yards we've been putting out seconds we depending on the yard we have 50 to 75 percent of the hives up into seconds now and just the way the year is we're a little bit behind Normal year, we'd be pretty much on time. But this year, we're just a little bit behind, so we're preparing those hives that we're doubling up to further skim off some nukes from them. Ah, so it's gonna be a lot of work ahead of us, but these hives are growing, and it's amazing how fast that they are progressing forward. And we just gotta try to keep up to them now. So one of the reasons why we're boosting up these builders is because we want to ensure there's a lot of young bees within the colonies. There's some debate around, uh, there's a lot of debate around this actually. The type and quality, the type and abundance of royal jelly all the way through until they get capped. There's some debate whether or not everyday jelly being fed is just a little bit different composition and if in fact that's the truth then there's further debate around whether or not it's the bees themselves that recognize the age of the larvae and they adjust the feed ratio within themselves to provide to that larvae or if it's in fact the specific age of bee that creates a specific uh, quality of of royal jelly to feed that larvae. And if it's to do with the specific age of bee to the specific quality of feed that's fed to that larvae, 
then that means we need every single stage, every single age of bee within those builders at all times to properly feed those uh, developing queens as we build these queens throughout the process. And we're building 45 cells per cell right now. Every start's 45 cells every four days. So we have to make for damn sure we have an abundance of young bees uh, introduced into those colonies at all times. One of the reasons, one of the ways we're doing that is with uh, introduction of brood frames. So we just have a constant emerge of young bees into that colony at all times. And the other way is just to smack a whole lot of bulk bees, shake them into the colonies just to make sure that they got everything that they need. So anyways, we're spending a little bit of time here uh, collecting these bees, just to making sure that we have everything that these builders need to build to properly draw out these cells. And by the looks of it, by the way the, uh, the, the builders are accepting the cells and the way they're building them out, they, they must be pretty well stocked. But we're just trying to carry that momentum forward um, into, you know, we want to get the first week, second week, uh, almost push into the third week before we shut them down. Cells are ready today. So today is the first day of the split. So we have prepared these big colonies earlier on in two boxes. So the queen has full reign over both these boxes. So we doubled up the boxes of bees earlier on and we arranged the top box as a split. So we had two foundation on each side and then we put six frames of comb in the center. So honey on each side and then four empties so we kind of enticed that queen to come up and lay within those little, those four frames. And that's basically what we're finding right now, is that queen has laid three to four nice little frames up top here. So simply put, what we're doing is we're coming through and we're shaking all these bees down into the bottom box to make sure that queen is isolated in the bottom. Unless we find her when we're shaking, then we can just put things back together. But we want that queen in the bottom box put an excluder in here the bees will come back over that brood and we'll come back either tonight or tomorrow morning and we'll just pull these frames out into a nuke and take it to our mating yard drop a nice little queen cell in there and hopefully we get some nice weather for mating these hives feel a little bit light we have flowers out and about now which is nice but we just, it's so windy. We can't seem to kick the wind this spring and we, the bees can't actually get out there and get the full amount of flowers that's available to them right now. These hives are starting to get light and I'm starting to wonder whether or not I should be putting sugar on these colonies or not. But I'm going to be patient because if these bees do get a little bit of flight weather, they're going to pack these colonies right full of brood. I mean right full of nectar. And we don't want to uh, plug the nests up while they're trying to develop through the spring. So as we're going through the yard again, as we make our continual cycle, um, taking these splits, we're also identifying our uh, stronger single units that didn't take a split box on top. Uh, the units that we went through and kind of equalized out, we're tipping them back and we're identifying all the strong ones. This one's about eight, nine frames of bees. So this one will not take uh, any more split. I can't take any more from these guys without compromising the crop. But they're too big and with this anticipated flow upon us, we're adding a honey box up on top of these guys now. Treatment is done, treatments are out. Honey box up on top. And this will just give these bees a little bit of space if we all of a sudden hit a heavy honey flow. Which I kind of hope we do. You get some of that free feed in here. We have lots of pollen, but we have to um, get this free stuff, you know. It's just waiting. Maybe the weather will cooperate. The hives like this one. I 
This one is a box of bees. They're building lots of drone comb in the bottom and just giving us hints of swarming yet. So these guys are just a little bit big. So as we go through, we're going to that honey box we put on top, we're replacing the center three frames with four frames of brood comb. And what I want to do in about a week or two weeks from now, no, two weeks too long, about a week, a week and a half, when we get back here, uh, we're going to target these colonies and I'm expecting that queen to have gone up, laid into those four brood combs. We'll just pull those out into a nuke, replace those with honeycomb and you know just take that hive down just a little bit more so that's the plan that's what we're working at right now uh, busy busy we got to try to keep up with these cells as they develop and hopefully this we can kick this wind and get those queens out <clears throat> and properly mate <laughs>